Hey everybody and welcome back to the Hive Mind StarCraft 2 tournament. My name is Evolution Gaming Woodhouse and I am bringing you the final match out of the two that we had in the semifinals for the winner's bracket this week. And this match, <coughs> is, as long as you've watched game one, you'll know who this match is against. This is Headshot versus Scipio, game number two. And without any further ado, we're just going to take you right into it. So you can see spawning over here on the left hand side of GSL's Belcher Beach Winter, we have our Purple Terran player, Headshot. And his opponent looking to put away this series with a 2-0 clean swipe victory. We have our yellow Protoss player, Scipio. And again, not a whole lot going on during this game. We get to see if Scipio decides to change his middle name to Standard at this point. We do see the first pylon coming down as well, though. No barracks yet, or no supply depot yet for Headshot. It does look like he's going to go ahead and do that now. There we go. Again, if you haven't watched you know, any of the games up to this point, I would definitely suggest you go do that. Go to YouTube.com, search Hivemind Star League. You will find all of the replays up through this week. Um... Not including this week, but up through this week. And that comes from both the uh, Bronze, Silver, Gold, and Platinum and the Masters League games. Those are all up there. This is, in fact, week three of this tournament. So the winner of this series, whether it be Headshot or Scipio, will advance on into the finals to be played at our April land. We do see a little bit of the pro harassment with the first barracks coming down, first gateway also down. But the winner of this will advance into the finals, the winner's finals, to be played at our land on April 14th. And his opponent right now, I'm not going to say because we don't like spoilers on this channel. But he will be playing... And then the loser from this match and the previous match will go down to the loser's bracket and they will have to await their fate for another week. There are four loser's bracket matches to be played. I think actually it's just two. I might be wrong. I don't know. I haven't looked at the, uh, the bracket yet this week, but one way or another, the loser of this match is going to have to wait a little bit to see whether to see who they will be playing. Wow, I am just kind of... I'm failboating on this cast, guys, and I apologize for that. We see a very, very early expansion, which I guess could be considered... And you can't see it, but I am doing the quotes with my fingers normal for Scipio. Going ahead and doing a one-gate FE. Now, usually when you do a one-gate FE against a Terran player, you go ahead and you put down your cyber court and you start that way. So the expansion doesn't actually come for about another 10 or 15 food... But going ahead and getting that expansion up and running early, his opponent headshot is going to go ahead and drop down his second gas geyser as well as a second barracks. Now, is this actually walled off? I don't know. I saw some craziness. Yes, it is, in fact, walled off. This choke, actually, the last couple of times this map has been played on has been kind of funky. We do see, with this being the winter version of this map, we see the... Expansion here, instead of being a half gold base, is actually a full normal mining base. First Zealot from Scipio coming out here to do some scouting, probably harass quite a bit. Tech Lab going down on the first barracks for headshot. Nexus for Scipio is actually just finishing. Does have a cybernetic score down now. Now, we're going to have to see what Scipio decides he is going to do now. And by now, I mean, he, you know, last game we saw kind of, kind of a gimmicky play to a, a large extent with going to Robo Colossi. He ended up just crushing Headshot, though. But like I said, that, you know, I don't know whether some of these builds have worked for him on the ladder or not, but they do seem at times kind of gimmicky. But we're going to have to see if he can pull out another amazing win here. Going ahead and getting both gas geysers on his natural at this point, which leads me to believe that with the two other gas geysers in his main, he is in fact going to go for some sort of two or three gate robo colossi pressure out of this. Still has, yeah, he has actually started warp gate. There is the first robotics facility going down right now. We 
We do see this army just kind of chilling here, looking towards making some noise at the front. Gonna go ahead and try and pick away at that Supply Depot and get fended off. No concussive shell yet, by the way, for Headshot. He is just now getting Stim. Stim is at 30 seconds of 170. Scipio is not quite saturated on his main. Uh, getting started working on that with his natural. Okay, so right now we actually do have a two-gate robo situation here. He did go gate, robo, gate. So we're going to have to see how that plays out. We do see the reactor going down on the starport for headshot. Tech lab on the factory. And an engineering bay coming in. Nice force field, actually. Keeping the SCV from being able to repair that supply depot. But the Marines and Marauders are enough there to scare that army back. The SCV going to go ahead and rewall that off. A Twilight Council now coming down for Scipio as well. Marines and Marauders, you see the first medevacs out, and it does look like Headshot is going to go for some sort of drop play early on here in this game. We do see a tank out now as well. Headshot just continuing to produce units. Could use a reactor on the second barracks to continue to produce two Marines at a time, but we're going to have to see how that plays out. We do see more Stalkers and whatnot building up at the front of his base. First Observer coming out, and a Templar Archives. So it does look like Scipio is going to go for some very, very early high Templar, which is going to be kind of pesky for these drops. But we're going to have to see if he transitions, or I shouldn't say what he transitions to, but how he transitions into whatever he has planned next. We do see he is Supply Block now with two more Observers on the way. Actually, both players are supply blocked at this point. 59 of 59 and 60 of 60, so essentially they are equal. We do see the medevacs are not seen, but Scipio is going to go ahead and just poke away up here. Again, force fielding so that no repair can come off. Some pretty good force fields, actually. And the drop does come in for headshot now. The front or sit, or for headshot is just getting completely wrecked at this point, but he does not see the drop coming in. This is going to be huge. So many probes. So many probes killed. Looking like he's going to pick off this one non-upgrading uh, non site for Forge. Wow. These two remaining stalkers, a sentry and a zealot, going to come back to try and clean this up. We do see zealot lake speed just about to finish it as well. And is Artosis? Oh, no, nope. Artosis didn't get to make an appearance on this this cast. Archon is transformed out in front of Scipio's base. It looks like Headshot is willing at this point to go for the kill. He does need to be careful, though, that Archon is a heavy hitter, and it does look like the first half of this push is going to get cleaned up by that Archon. And the two medevacs, not enough keep up with the damage that is coming out. Is that Archon? The Archon does go down with a huge loss, but he does lose one medevac in that drop. He does lift up the one remaining Marauder and decides to skedaddle out of there. Siege tanks now have siege mode in that battle. We did miss that, but another siege tank out. There is actually very little to no production coming out of headshot at this point. Supply right now actually in his favor though, 59 to 47. And Scipio, again the king of non-standard play, taking a third base off of two gateways, three gateways, and a robo, and a... Oh, I missed did that. And an oversaturated uh, natural. And a non-saturated main. So the trade-off there, kids, is the uh, the oversaturation and the non-saturation. <coughs> we do see a second Immortal coming out now, as well as two more gateways. So he is going to be up to four gateways now by this point. So four minutes at 13, or four gates at 13 minutes in the game. 
for those of you watching with your StarCraft notebook, you're writing this down because you see this is a, a, an interesting way to play by Scipio. We do see the third just now finished for Scipio as well. The natural four headshot is coming out now. He needs to turn that into a planetary. But instead opting just to kind of chill at the front for a couple minutes, that's fine. Eventually it will get there. Because remember, in StarCraft 2, it's not important that it happens right away. It's, it's important that it eventually happens. So what did you do in that game? Well, I eventually beat my opponent. And I, oh my god, Skype. Skype is... No. No, Blake. Blake, I, I, I don't want to talk to you right now. I'm casting, buddy. We do see the two geysers coming out of Headshot now at the natural and we do see strangely enough a planetary fortress I don't know how I feel about that considering usually you run off of at least two planetaries in the game we do see the double gas is getting taken down here for Scipio as well uh, normally you get two uh, orbital commands because eventually late game Terran builds up to a point where you can you can work off of solely mules um, if you've watched any of the GSL games, you've definitely seen it at least once there, where both of the Terran players do end up sacking an entire mule or an entire mineral line worth of SCDs to get, as Artosis calls it, true maxed out, which is, as we all know, impossible with SCVs in that mix. We do see the push for Scipio going to come out now. We're going to have to see if he has more boss mode immortals like he had last week if you remember the games on this map he actually did like run around with four or five immortals for a very very long time and yeah like just completely rocked it i'm like all right whatever no more upgrades coming out now we do see a second robo going down and the dark shrine is out as well so scipio deciding though to keep up with the protoss mantra when behind Dark Shrine, we do see him getting that out now. It'll be interesting to see how he decides to how he decides to go about that. If he decides to warp in a couple of DTs, to my knowledge, we don't actually have no, we don't have any DTs out right now on the field. But that could change as we speak. We do see upgrades kicking back in for uh, Scipio as well. There was a small engagement up here, getting driven away by the army of Headshot. One, 126 to 95 supply right now for the two players. Again, both players just continuing to macro as per usual. We do see production kicking back in for headshot at this point. And again, still with Scipio with the mass over oversaturation at his natural. We do see him tacking down more pylons. He does, again, Pull down the holy pylons, Batman, and just continues to attack them down. Oh my god, this is huge. If he manages to take this out, this is going to be a huge... Oh my god. Run, probes! Run! <laughs> Back to the base, oh my god. And it does look like the probes do manage to make it out. Unless... Maybe... And we do see, oh, and a couple of good storms taking off. And oh, no, headshot standing right in the side storm. The army getting completely obliterated, and it is going to get cleaned up by this army of Scipio. The medevacs are rightfully saying, I am going to get out of here. I don't want any part of that. Those were some beautiful storms by Scipio to completely devastate the army. We did see at some point a third robo also come out <coughs> for Scipio. We do see the three Immortals crab walk in their way to victory. This music is tense. I've never actually listened to the music on this map before. And oh, the Planetary Fortress repair, repair, repair. Scanning to make sure his own base does not have a DT in it, but does manage to pick off an OBS. An OBS. He did, a, did actually constrict himself against being able to help with this. Some good force fields by Scipio, denying the repair on that orbital command. Was there a hairdryer in there? Yes, there was. It was right there. If you didn't see it, the Terran hairdryer. Again, force fielding the army in the base. Headshot needs to do some sort of force field elevator play, but does not manage to do so. Just lets those force fields be. So right now, actually, 
Scipio being insanely ballsy and taking a fourth base again. So again, the king of non-standard play showing us why he's non-standard. He's still only on five gateways at this point, or four gateways, excuse me, but three Robo Bays out, and he is currently boosting Colossi. So at this point, unlike the last game, we actually do see his economy is able to handle it, even with the gross over probing at the uh, second. I'm going to go ahead and take both of those gas geysers down here at his third as well. Again, headshot not feeling so confident about taking his own natural. So instead, he's going to go down here and expand next to Scipio. I'm just, I just keep waiting to see, hey, do you mind if I mine here? We do see some DTs out now. Again, very, very gas-heavy units. Two, three more gateways, four more gateways going down. So he will be on a total of eight. This army for Scipio is very, very gas-heavy. And that's why I've been skeptical of it the last few games. Now, granted, he has won. Like, I, you know, there's... I'm going to see a scan somewhere going down. And the SCV train just about losing it. We do see a massive drop coming in here for Headshot. The main force Scipio is just about mined out. He is just about to get level 3 weapons. But is it going to finish before this drop gets there? That is a huge drop by headshot. The DTs working their way through. Oh, and the feedbacks. Those were some clutch feedbacks. Killing those medevacs outright. For those of you who don't know what feedback is, it basically kills fully energy medevacs. It is the bane of the Terran drop. Oh my god, those were beautiful feedbacks. Drains all energy from a target and deals one point of damage per energy. So yes, that was a huge shot for those of you who didn't know what that ability was. We do see the army of Scipio going to go ahead and move forward. I don't think he knows about this expansion yet. Headshot not really producing that much at this point. Um, he doesn't really have the money to either. He's been basically throwing away armies at this point. So really the exchange hasn't been that great. We look at the units loss tab. I don't remember where that is. There we go. We do see that headshot is in fact ahead in terms of units lost and the big Colossus-driven army of hedge or of Scipio going to go ahead and push right into the main of his opponent, cleaning up all of those units, force building so they cannot get through. But ironically, force building his units right there. A little bit of an incorrect move there by Headshot also to move his main planetary out of his main without completely mining out those gas geysers. Because we do see the build and the manor lift. It, it makes its appearance yet again. Headshot known for the manor lift so much in this tournament when behind. We do see him going ahead and manor lifting. The two tickle beams from those sentries are going to just try and work away. Now the question is, is will Headshot shit the bed on this? Because it has been known that you can win games with probes and chairs. But we're going to have to see if Scipio allows him to come back and win with just a probe and a chair. Or if Headshot is going to wet himself in the sight of this massive army of Scipio. Landing the barracks. I don't know how I feel about that landing placement. Considering it's right in the walking path of these units. Factory going to go ahead and just kind of chill there. Scipio knowing what's up. Doesn't see the headshot is being revealed instead of looking around he does notice that that is up there but this oh no the barracks the barracks oh and the tick is that all he has for anti-air is tickle beams those five tickle beams man even though they are three three tickle beams they are still tickle beams nonetheless the barracks are burning now. They will manage to burn down right in the middle of this crevasse. Headshot getting unsupply blocked at 18 to 199 now. And oh my god, no. It looks like he is found out. Will he decide to do the manor lift here? I don't think so. Storming his own units there. That's a little bit of an advanced tactic. By advanced, I mean really bad. 
storm your own units and the gg comes out from headshot so there we have it the winners or the wow i just lost my train of thought the bracket is set for the winners finals next week at the hive mind lan so for those of you watching definitely make sure that you check out that when it comes around in two weeks so Scipio becomes the second player to move on to the winner's bracket finals, meaning Headshot gets dropped down into the loser's bracket to await his fate. He joins Freaks on that boat, and those two actually have the week off this week. So with that, guys, make sure you tune in for the cast of Freaks games later this week when he puts them up. Those will be the loser's bracket games. So, yeah, definitely check those out when they come up. And I look forward to seeing what comes of this at the LAN. So thank you guys for watching. And as far as this goes, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. But I will actually be back here with a couple of the Masters League casts. Stay with me.